good morning in this video I will talk about cavity cavity modes and lasers and I will also show you some of the laser modes whatever I will talk about in this video I will demonstrate to you practically so as you might have heard a lot about waves and cavities and modes of a cavity but what are they so if you look uh, at uh, a cavity a cavity is nothing just an empty space enclosed by either two walls or two mirrors and there is something inside the cavity you must have seen some science experiments where they tie a string on one end of the cavity and uh, tie another end on the other end and this is the string here when you give some vibration at this the string will either vibrate like this which is the fundamental mode or the string will vibrate like this which is then the first harmonic after the fundamental mode or the string will vibrate in the third harmonic something like this now what is happening in bit here suppose this length is L then there is a very simple relationship between the wavelength of this wave on the string so wavelength is nothing just how much length does it took for this wave to repeat itself that is wavelength and there is relationship between wavelength and this length as you can see that this length is always integer multiple of half of the wavelength or I can say that L is always equal to n into lambda by 2 where n is some integer and lambda is wavelength and 2 is a proportionality factor now this was the wave on a string what will happen if I take a cavity where there are two mirrors on these two ends and I just leave some light say photons or light particles which also have wave nature inside this cavity so this light will travel at the speed of the light which is C it will go and it will bounce back from this mirror come back to this mirror bounce back come back bounce back come back all the time now if the light which I had put in the cavity suppose it has a group of wavelengths suppose if I plot this is the wavelength and this is the intensity and I put a light which has all the wavelengths like a white light say from this lambda 1 to lambda 2 all the wavelengths are there and I let this light to bounce back and forth in this cavity after some time if I again look at the light in this cavity I will find that some of the waves some of the light waves of some of the wavelengths will disappear only some of them will appear remain so the spectrum will change and it will look something like discrete and why does this happen this happened because of the interference of light waves as you know that uh, light is a wave very similar what we had seen in the case of strings here the light waves will interfere and only those light waves which satisfy this condition will only be able to survive inside this cavity and because of that only those discrete wavelengths of light will remain which satisfy n lambda by 2 equal to L condition 
now this n is an integer and uh, there will be several waves of frequency now you may ask how can you uh, leave a light inside the cavity uh, or can i give you an example where a light is inside a cavity trapped inside a cavity a very simple and very uh, easy example is something which you use in your day-to-day -day life uh, it's a laser either a diode laser or some other kind of helium neon laser or or some other kind of laser a laser is nothing but a cavity a laser has two cavity mirrors and basically the light is bouncing back and forth in this cavity only difference is that there is a lasing medium in between sometimes this entire cavity is filled with the lasing medium and light is bouncing back and forth only difference is that there is a lasing medium in between so what we do in this is we have this lasing medium and we pump this lasing medium uh, how do we pump it either we pass a current through this or we uh, put a flash lamp or we can strike this uh, with a different uh, laser itself to pump this medium so what happens when uh, inside this cavity this material is pumped as you must be knowing about your basic quantum mechanics that every material has some energy levels so this is ground state energy zero first excited state second excited state etc very often these energy levels are actually a group of energy levels rather than single energy levels so once you pump this material with current or flash lamp the molecules or atoms which were in the ground state get excited to the upper states and many and very often this may happen that there is population inversion in this material that means you pump so hard that with respect to some of the ground or intermediate level there are more number of atoms or molecules in the upper state now once this inverted material with this inverted population inverted population means it's inverted in general in normal circumstances the ground state has more uh, atoms or molecule compared to excited state but here the situation is inverted the upper state has more than ground state that's all what we mean by inversion now there is inversion of population in these two levels and so this material have this inverted population few at the bottom and more at the top now what will happen suppose this atom which is at higher excited level comes down when it comes down usually it emits a light photon so light is generated inside this cavity so this light will bounce back and come back now light follows a very simple process so energy of this light corresponds to energy of this light corresponds to the difference between these two energy levels as the light will be bounced back from the mirror and it returns back it will make this upper level atom to fall down emitting another photon now you may ask why would this light will uh, make this upper level photon down why will not it send the from bottom to up actually light does not distinguish it can either send from lower level to higher level or from higher level to lower level light can do both without any prejudice however effectively if there are more number of atoms in upper level state then on average there will be emission that is upper level atoms are going, going coming down to the uh, lower energy level if there is uh, 
if there are more number of atoms in the ground state then there will be absorption so these ground state uh, atoms will absorb the light and excite it there but if already the population is inverted this light will try to equalize things it will bring these things down bring these uh, excited atoms down and as these excited atoms come down they will be of exactly same wavelength and frequency of this input photon so that effectively generate two photons now these two photons will then can further bring down to more and so on now only one photon came from this side but a large number of photon will be exiting from this side and they will hit the mirror here some of and then they will uh, be reflected back and in the meantime we'll pump it again to maintain this population inversion so that every back and forth pass through the medium will result in the amplification of the light intensity and unique thing is since these photons are of the same wavelength same frequency they will be completely in phase with each other and after that what we will do we will either make a small hole in one of the mirror or we'll coat it partially so that some of the light photons which are coming here a tiny percentage say one percent can escape out and this one percent photon are actually your laser light and this is highly monochromatic uh, highly coherent coherent means all of them are in the same phase now this laser light as we had seen in the cavity can have several several wavelengths these are discrete monochromatic wavelengths and these are and these are known as the longitudinal modes of the laser now in a very high quality laser where you need a very monochromatic light there are ways to discard some of these modes by either putting some coatings on the mirrors where only the particular mode which you want to amplify will only get reflected and other modes will just go out and die away uh, or there can be external feedback or there can be external filters to separate these modes however the good thing is that many of the diode laser or semiconductor diode lasers uh, they are multi-mode and uh, I will explain to you how these semiconductor diode lasers work and uh, how can we see these modes and what information we can gather by looking or measuring these modes. So these semiconductor lasers are just P and junction. So they are like P type and N type uh, material, semiconductor material join together which result in the formation of depletion region and this semiconductor material is crystalline and we cut these edges so that they act like mirror then we put a voltage around it and we make these carriers to go through this when these carriers are passing through this medium some of them recombine with each other they recombine and they generate light and that light is then confined within these two mirror cavities within these two mirrors so then your laser will come out like this in order to count confine these uh, carriers these semiconductor lasers are uh, made using several layers which are known as heterostructure lasers and uh, but the important thing which we, are, which we are talking about is that this light which will come out will have several modes and thankfully we can measure this mode in a spectroscope or a spectrometer which I am going to show you next and by measuring the mode spacing we can measure the length of this cavity of semiconductor as you recall we had said that n lambda by 2 equal to length of the cavity and these are the laser modes 
and what if the spacing between modes spacing between modes will be nothing but uh, if we can say that n lambda equal to 2l or then between two consecutive n1 and n2 say n1 and n1 plus 1 the we can say that uh, n1 lambda is equal to m n1 lambda 1 equal to 2l n2 lambda 2 should also be equal to 2l now if we subtract the these then we'll see that n1 lambda 1 minus n2 lambda 2 equal to 0 now we don't know that n1 lambda 1 suppose n2 is just n1 plus 1 equal to 0 so what we get from this from this we can say that uh, n1 lambda 1 minus n1 lambda 2 minus lambda 2 equal to 0 that means n1 lambda 1 minus lambda 2 equal to lambda 2 now suppose this is the mode spacing let's let me term this as delta lambda equal to lambda 2 now delta lambda equal to lambda 2 by n1 so this delta lambda is lambda 2 divided by n1 and from this equation we can say that n1 equal to 2l by lambda 1 so we can say that delta lambda equal to lambda 2 divided by 2l by lambda 1 which is nothing but equal to lambda 2 lambda 1 divided by 2l now we can say that these lambda 2 lambda 1 are nearly equal to the center frequency of the laser let's say it's lambda that gives us delta lambda equal to lambda square by 2l or l equal to lambda square by 2 into delta lambda we will use this equation now to find out what is the cavity size of a semiconductor diode laser i will be using a red diode laser which i will show you shortly i will also show you the technique i use i have this red laser pointer here i have glued some cell around it some cheap batteries and you can see that i can turn it on i can turn it on you can see it on the paper and this is giving me the red light instrument which i am going to use to measure the wavelengths of uh, or the modes of the semiconductor diode laser is known as a spectroscope so this is the input side of the spectroscope there is an input slit here if uh, you can see it this slit i can uh, open or close and the light will enter through this slit light will enter through this slit go down this tube this tube is actually a telescope there is a lens here that will collimate this light beam and then i have a diffraction grating uh, which is right here it is a thousand lines per mm diffraction grating and if the light from this tube will strike it will be it will it will get converted into its uh, component colors and uh, i can move this to face the the incoming light it will get converted into its component colors and uh, then different uh, wavelength of color will be uh, deviated by different angles it is very similar to a prism but this is flat and it has uh, some properties which make it convenient for us to use them compared to prism then there is another telescope which i can use to gather the light and i can then uh, put my camera behind this another eyepiece one suggestion which i would uh, make is that uh, when you have a laser at the input even though i'm using a quite low power laser never put your eye here because the laser light is still quite bright 
so it's always better to put camera near this eyepiece now if you don't have the spectroscope uh, you can make your own uh, homemade spectroscope which i have made made it looks something like this i have a diffraction grating and i have a hollow tube and at the end of this hollow tube i have cut a small slit and light can go through this slit and uh, you can put your cell phone uh, behind this slit and your cell phone will make spectrum so now let's see the result we get so here is how the laser modes look like you can see that for example here sometimes two modes are dominant and there are many small modes on the sideways and sometimes uh, there is no particular dominating mode this happens when the current fluctuates through the laser diodes but you can see that these modes appear at the same place and there is a fixed difference between them i was able to take the picture of these modes and i put them in the image software and then i was able to plot these modes as you can see as the intensity plot and then i measured how many number of modes are there and how many pixels they are in and here i found there were 31 modes close to uh, spanning around 390 pixels that comes to be around 12.6 pixels per mode earlier i had calibrated my camera spectroscope system which uh, gave me the uh, uh, close to 0 0.04 nanometer per pixel and so from this i arrived that the distance between the two consequent uh, modes is close to 0 0.5 nanometer now by using this value of 0 0.5 nanometer and using the formula which we had calculated earlier that length of cavity l equal to lambda square divided by 2 into delta lambda and i know that this is red laser and its uh, emission wavelength is close to 650 nanometer so i put everything in the formula here and uh, by putting all the values we can see that the calculated length of the cavity comes out to be 422 micrometer which is close to like 0 0.4 millimeter which is very small and it's such a technological wonder that we can uh, fabricate uh, such complicated optical devices in such a small space. I hope you enjoyed the videos and you understood uh, the principles behind cavity, cavity modes and lasers. Thank you.